wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with... Once, advertising persuaded people to buy things. Products said, here's why you should buy me. A bigger picture and a better picture. I'm better than brand X. Don't get soggy like flat flakes. The one doctors recommend by name more often than any other It worked. Brand. Advertising spread into every available space. Perhaps it worked too well. Today, we are forced to ignore advertising or be overwhelmed. We are buried in commercials, not because advertising is so powerful, but because it has lost its power to change minds. We no longer find ads credible. How many ads can you remember from yesterday? How many ads did you believe? When was the last time an ad made you buy something? In a TV dinner sort of way. Ads entertain. They're fun to watch. They might even be an art form. Yet, they've lost some of the power to persuade. But that doesn't mean they don't work. Increasingly, ads today position instead of persuade. Positioning is an attempt to change perceptions instead of minds. To position a product is to shape how people see it. A product's position is the space it occupies in the consumer's mind. Imagine the brain as boxes of information. Some boxes are quite important, but most help us cope with daily life. Here's one labeled, animals to pet. Another is labeled, animals to avoid. Most of us have a box labeled, good foods to eat daily while another contains foods to avoid. How does this concern marketers? Take pork, for example. About 20 years ago, pork producers noticed people were eating less pork. They discovered many considered pork a fatty food to be avoided. That was its position in the public eye. They also noticed people labeled chicken and turkey as healthy meats. But pork was now leaner. In fact, some cuts contained less fat than chicken or turkey. How could they tell the public? They produced a campaign calling pork the other white meat. It worked. People did eat more pork, and many still see it as the other white meat. Positioning does not require the product to change, only how people see the product. A position can change over time. Consider yogurt. In the 1950s, few Americans ate yogurt. Most positioned it as a weird food eaten by foreigners. Yogurt was for health food nuts, but not the general public. In the 1970s, Dannon launched an ad campaign to position yogurt as a healthy food, humorously suggesting it might help people live longer. By the 1980s, Americans ate 35 times as much yogurt as in the 1950s. Yogurt was firmly positioned as a normal part of the daily diet, at least for adults. But yogurt wasn't for kids. Back in 1999, less than 30% of kids, 6 to 12, ate yogurt. So yogurt makers introduced new products to reposition yogurt as a child-friendly food. So yogurt's position changed from an almost unknown foreign food to a health food, to a mainstream food for adults, to an everyday food even for kids. Each repositioning gained a larger market. If, back in the 1980s, Dannon tried to persuade people they should eat yogurt because it's good for you, it would probably still be a specialty food in health stores. Even the position of milk has changed. Fresh milk was not a common drink 150 years ago. Most milk was sold in its preserved state as cheese and butter. Unrefrigerated milk caused many illnesses in the 19th century, and drinking it was controversial. Even today, much of the world does not drink fresh milk. The idea of milk as a food children need and as nature's perfect food is a position built by milk producers through years of advertising and public relations. Milk is nutritious and does add needed calcium to the diet, but not all healthful foods gain space in the box labeled good foods to eat daily. Another food that has changed positions over time is the carbonated soft drink. Soft drinks were first sold not as a refreshment, but as medicine. In 1876, Heyer's root beer was positioned as a mix of 16 wild roots and berries that would purify the blood and make rosy cheeks. Dr. Pepper, even the name hints at its medical past, 
was first sold as a way to aid digestion and restore vim, vigor, and vitality. Both Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola were invented by pharmacists and sold in drugstores, somewhat like a dietary supplement today. North Americans drink nearly a gallon of soft drinks each week thanks to years of repositioning them from the medicine box to the everyday refreshments box. But there's no guarantee that carbonated soft drinks will maintain that position. That's one reason Coca-Cola already owns many brands that are not carbonated soft drinks. They are prepared to benefit from the future repositioning of water and juices. Advertisers know changing your perception is easier than changing your mind. One tactic is simply to say, look at our product this way. HBO tells you not to put HBO in that box labeled television programs. They want you to think, what's on HBO, not what's on TV. The city of Santa Barbara, California wants you to think of it as the American Riviera. That's a positioning statement. Zest here claims that it is not a soap. In fact, that it's fresher than soap. Zest takes you to a clean you could never get from soap. Enterprise suggests here that renting a car is not merely for a vacation or business trip. Instead, you should see it as a convenient form of temporary ownership. So easy, it's like having a second car. Here, Stouffer's asks readers to think of their frozen entree as a family-style recipe. While another frozen food maker wants you to think of its food as home style and made from scratch. Both try to position frozen meals in that box labeled home cooking. The idea is to position frozen food as homemade, not as something you eat when you don't have time to cook. They want consumers to think that serving a frozen dinner is cooking. Many people see margarine as substitute for butter. These spreads position themselves in that box labeled, what to spread on bread, rather than the second rate, substitute. Positioning requires market research, the study of consumer perceptions. Marketers use a variety of ways to learn how people currently perceive their products. Perhaps the first market research project took place about a hundred years ago, when Charles Parlin of the Saturday Evening Post wanted Campbell's soup as an advertiser. Campbell knew the post was read mainly by working people, but he saw canned soup as a luxury product for the upper classes. It was expensive for its time, a dime a can. So Parlin had Philadelphia's trash dumped in a warehouse and cataloged its contents. The garbage from the upper class areas contained few empty cans. Most of the soup cans were from the blue collar areas. Parlin learned that consumers position canned soup as a time saver, not a luxury item. Campbell became a regular advertiser in the Saturday Evening Post, and Campbell's soup remains today a convenience, not a luxury. Today's research is more sophisticated, but its goal remains the same. Campbell's soup noted that people often eat away from home, but its soup was not inside that mental box labeled, food to eat on the go. So Campbell created a microwavable container called soup at hand as a positioning strategy. Another tool of market research is perceptual mapping. Consumers rate competing brands on at least two qualities. The resulting map reveals the differences people see among competing brands. Here's a perceptual map of auto brands. The vertical axis is price, economical at the bottom and expensive at the top. The horizontal line is style, conservative on the left and sporty on the right. Perceptual mapping revealed that consumers saw little difference between GM's Oldsmobile and Buick brands. So GM dropped the Oldsmobile name after more than 50 years of use. So marketers discover positions through research and perceptual mapping. Sometimes they make positioning statements. They also position by market segments. Cereals are often positioned to appeal to a specific market segment. Fruit Loops is positioned for kids, Healthy Advantage Granola for people concerned about nutrition, and Quaker offers a Nutrition for Women line. For many years, breakfast cereals and candy were the only foods positioned for kids. But marketers soon realized that kids influence what mom buys, so they positioned both new and existing foods so kids would see them as cool to eat. Some traditional foods were repackaged and renamed just for kids. 
Gatorade was created in the 1960s as a fluid replacement drink for a very small market, the University of Florida Gators football team. But through promotion and contracts with pro sports teams, the drink, later bought by Pepsi, was repositioned as a refreshment for young active people. Gatorade was joined by other brands of sports drinks and moved from being a fluid replacer for athletes into that refreshment box, a multi-billion dollar market. Marketers use emotion, stories, and even magic to position products. Michelin uses emotion to position tires not as something you put on a car, but as something you buy to safeguard your family, more as insurance than a mere auto part. Here, an automaker positions a convertible as exhilaration, even for someone old enough to wear a tie. It uses emotion to equate driving with love. Automakers often position their car as a way to feel free. Feelings play a role in positioning, even for cookies. Pepperidge Farm creates a story. One line of cookies is positioned as a European luxury item using city names such as Bordeaux, Verona, Milano, and Brussels. They position another line of cookies using themes of tradition and homemade goodness. The label announces simple, comforting, cookies that taste like they came right from mom's cookie jar. Even the name Pepperidge Farm suggests cookies baked by grandma in a country farm kitchen instead of on an assembly line in a huge factory. Many products, such as this cleaner, use magical animated bubbles as a storyline. The position is that the magical bubbles are like servants who do the work for you. Other marketers give products a personality to bring them to life and create a memorable position. Many ads use visual magic. Even the army uses story and myth to recruit soldiers. It's human nature to assume that if lots of other people like something, I might like it as well. So brands often position themselves as one that lots of people use, positioning by social approval. That's the best Ads movie for I've plays or movies sometimes like show regular again. people saying movie. how much really they enjoyed the show. Social approval explains why so many marketers claim their product is the most popular, the best selling, or simply number one. The idea is to position the product as one that lots of other people use. The whole country's waking up to. Social approval helps explain the value of diamonds. Ads and marketing help position diamonds as a symbol of everlasting love. Without social approval, diamonds are just another shiny hard rock. In products from soap to chips, competing brands are quite similar, even identical. Positioning encourages consumers to see differences where few exist. Many bottled water drinkers are loyal to one brand, yet taste tests reveal most consumers cannot tell bottled water from city tap water. In fact, much bottled water is city tap water. Like yogurt, which was repositioned from a foreign health food into an everyday food, water has been repositioned from something that comes from the tap for free into something in a bottle that you buy. Today, we spend over six billion dollars a year to drink bottled water. The differences in brand perception are driven by positioning. Aquafina and Dasani brands are owned by Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Aquafina positions itself as youthful and edgy, while Dasani appeals more to health and family values mirroring the position for Pepsi and Coke. Advertising helps the consumer see the waters as different. Often, advertisers position a product in terms of competing brands. Sometimes the competing brands are shown or referred to in the ad itself. This body wash ad suggests the competition should be used to shampoo the family pet. Apple Computer almost always advertises to position itself as an easy-to-use alternative to Microsoft's Windows. Nabisco not Shredded bad. Wheat positions itself as the cereal with nothing Definitely added. Not sugar. And not a pinch of salt. Claiming a product is environmentally friendly or natural implies that competing brands are in some way polluting or unnatural. 
Not only products, but also whole industries can be repositioned. Oil companies can improve their public perception by repositioning themselves as energy companies. Lumber or paper companies can reposition themselves as tree farmers or forest managers to change public perceptions. The organic food industry can position itself as a healthier alternative to regular food. At the same time, they also position ordinary food as somehow inferior. Here, Campbell's positions itself as part of the food as medicine trend. Already heard Here, the news. sweet and Cheerios, Cheerios are positioned as a way to lower cholesterol, cholesterol a, a new position for an old brand. This spread positions itself as a food with benefits beyond taste and traditional nutrition. Here, Pepto-Bismol repositions its pink liquid as for more than upset stomachs to expand the potential market. Here's an attempt to position kiwi fruit as a food for breakfast. The name kiwi is itself a word chosen by its growers as a positioning tactic. Its original name, Chinese gooseberry. A shoe and bag manufacturer who uses plastics instead of leather could position the products for those concerned about the welfare of animals, a sizable market segment. A brand can position itself effectively by price. In many product categories, one or two brands claim the high price position, seeking those consumers who connect quality with a high price tag. Grey Poupon Mustard and Evian Bottled Water sell for 50% or more than competing brands. That high price is part of their positioning. One of the most used strategies is to occupy the position of least costly. A few airlines clearly take the position of the low-priced way to fly. IHOP positions its breakfast by price point, leaving the position of upscale breakfast restaurant to others. This store positions itself as a bargain choice. Walmart positions itself as everyday low prices. The name of a product can, in itself, be a positioning tactic. Some names tell the prospective customer why to buy it. Beautiful. Slim fast. Close up toothpaste. Die hard batteries. Or head and shoulder shampoo are examples. A breakfast bar or candy bar with a few changes can become instead a nutrition bar. Note the name here. It's a meal bar. They're saying this is a meal substitute, not merely a snack. Even a candy bar can be renamed a fast break in order to position it as a timeout to avoid negative connotations of the word candy bar. And this is not merely bottled H2O, it's fitness water. Volvo holds the safety position for cars. Even though other automakers produce cars just as safe, say, safe car, and most people respond, Volvo. Even an attribute as simple as shape can help position a product. White Castle Square Hamburgers, and castle-like building, have set it apart from competitors for decades. Without its distinct shape, animal crackers would be just another boring cookie. Even the shape of pasta can create a product. And this cereal would be just another grain and sugar mix without its distinctive shape. Color helps to differentiate product positions. Prell's green shampoo is widely recognized. The Yellow Pages is a clever way to establish a phone listing as a unique brand. UPS even uses the term brown as a self-applied label. A strong position is to be new. But how can an established brand be both familiar and new? One way is to keep the existing name and change some attribute, a color, shape, taste, flavor, size, in order to use that magic positioning word, new. The problem is that although new is a clear position, it's only temporary. Once you understand positioning, you will see it all around, and not just in consumer ads. Positioning is used by corporations, organizations, and governments. All try to position themselves in your mind to influence how you see.